Time for some viewers' comments. I might be stating the obvious here, but I would weld the two end ones and maybe the middle one in. That way, you are one welding restricted on two of them. So what he's saying is that he would have welded in the outside two and the middle one first. So that way, you have an unobstructed path around the whole way. Makes it easier. And then put these two in after. But the reason I didn't do it, the problem that, that creates is you're starting here, so you're stuffed against this one, so that's difficult. And then when you come around, you're stuffed in against this one, so that's difficult too. Same with this one. Difficult, difficult. So you got three easy ones, but the consequence is you have two difficult ones. And then if you do it that way, they're not all going to look the same. The way I did it, I did this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So you, you run around that one, and then you run around this one, keep going. The only hard spot you have is the weld start and the weld stop. This, these halfway points are really easy to do. So for the sake of making them all look the same in symmetry, I did it the way I did it for that reason. As a matter of procedure, I think I would have done the two outer flanges first for full circumferential access, followed by the next two in, so only one difficult radial point on those, followed by the most difficult center one, but I am just an engineer. Right you are, you are just an engineer. I'm not knocking all engineers, but it's very unfortunate that most of you don't have any real world experience before you design parts. So what you're saying is you would do the outside two first, Okay, easy, right? No obstructions. And then these two, so you can start here and run around. So just the starting point and stop point. And then here, go around whichever way. And then that leaves you the middle one to be difficult. So you're stuffed in on both sides. So no matter how you do this, they're not going to look symmetrical because you're fighting your torch angle on the difficult ones. Like I said, in the, like I said before, just do them all the exact same, get good at it and do them all the exact same. And then all your stops are in the same spot and then you don't have obstructions on the opposing side. At least you weld engineer guys aren't nearly as bad as automotive engineers. Don't get me started on that. I almost became a mechanic. I'm glad I didn't. I always clean the rod with scotch pad, and make sure you keep the rod in the universe of the arc. So I've bought fill a rod from probably five different suppliers over the past 15-20 years, and I've never needed to scotch bright them off. There was one company I remember I had to I was having to wipe them off with a, a paper towel because they were kind of oily for whatever reason. But other than that, I've never had to do that. And then all you're doing is just scuffing off aluminum and packing it into this scotch bright pad and then probably using the same scotch bright pad on the next fill rod. So you just have this dust bowl down in here you're just packing and smearing around. So what good does that really do you? Unless you're wiping it off after that every single time with a paper towel. I am planning on welding up a 25 gallon gas tank. I am wondering if I should weld the inside and outside of the tank or would I be overwhelming it and creating problems? Hi Pete, it really depends on the dimensions of the gas tank, like what you're making it out of. If it's round like this, like a big semi-truck tank, you really can't access the inside to weld it. But if it's like square edges, I would absolutely weld the inside also. I wouldn't weld the whole inside, you know, I would do like one inch stitch welds you know, just space them out evenly every three inches or so. But it's hard to say exactly without seeing a drawing of what you're doing. You can email me if you want. But the only tank, I built a lot of tanks. The only tank I ever had fail on me was a big L tank like that that you put in the back of a pickup truck to hold diesel, you know, like a 50 gallon or 100 or whatever. And this part right here, it's the, you know, if you're looking down it, it's the full width of the tank, of the bed, sorry. And there's so much flat surface area on all these spots, all that fuel sloshing around 
eventually fatigued this weld joint and made it split right here and it leaked out. So yeah, you, I would recommend you know getting in here and stitch welding all of everything you possibly can. And then make sure you use thick enough material for what you're doing. I think I made this one, this was like 10 years ago, I made it out of uh, 8 or 3 16 which was a pretty big mistake. I should have done it out of quarter so there wasn't any flexing or you know if you're looking at this part you could on the inside you could do some kind of gusseting to help stiffen it up and then put baffles all over in it so when it's slosh and it's not throwing all that fuel all the way to that fuel on the sides while they're driving. When sealing parts are welded do you get it right the first time? So yeah, I now, you know, after all these years of doing this, I do almost always get it right the first time. All these welds are a good complete seal. But, you know, for the first five or ten years, there's always these little... You, you have to learn from trial and error. You know, you'll have... You'll be welding around this whole part and come back and you'll not tie in that weld stop just right. And you'll get this little pinhole that'll leak air out, you know. And I did a an intercooler video, I don't know, probably five years ago, where I pressure tested it and sprayed it all down and there's a, one or two little pinholes that were leaking out gas. You know, it's just, it's just part of the game, really. But the better you clean your parts, the better you fit your parts, and the more mindful you are of your weld starts and stops, how you're tying them in, the less likely you are to have leaks. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I don't know. Let me know if this is too long or too short of a video or if you don't want to see these at all and you just want to see build videos.